Yo, what's up guys? Here we go again, another episode of Monster. This is episode 5 and this episode is called The Girl from Heidelberg. So last time, Johann Liebert showed up and killed Jungers, right? Uh, we learned that he was also the one that poisoned the um, uh, staff at the um, hospital, right? And the policeman. And we also learned that his real name is actually not Liebert, right? We didn't learn any more than that, but still, this is getting crazy. Um, all over the place, like, uh, there's so many questions still, and... Uh, why, why, what, what is Johan getting out of this? Like, he's just punishing evil people, or what, what is, what is going on with that, right? But anyway, I'm very excited to get into the next episode, so without further ado, let's go! So let's see what this episode can bring us, guys. The girl from Heidelberg. Now, class, I want you to tell me what was the basis for the ruling the judge made in regards to the 1968 Stuttgart case. Boy, oh boy, what is this silence? Why are we some kind of a monastery? Um, just very boring. <laughs> Mr. Reimer, I'd like to hear your answer if you have um, one. Uh, well, sir, <laughs> that is to say, I, uh... Anyone? Is there anyone in this room who can break this silence? Maybe this girl that is gonna barge in? Hmm. So the chronic latecomer is here at last. You're 13 minutes tardy. Seems your part-time pizza delivery job kept you awfully busy today. <laughs> I'm sorry, Professor Kronecker. Well... Let me ask you a question before you sit down. Do you have enough strength left to tell me the basis for the ruling in the what? 1960s? Yeah, I was about to say, watch her, watch her answer oh, the question. Oh, yes. Well, the defense claimed that the kidnapping was a sham and that the victim's death had been due to poisoning. After an investigation into the crime scene, it was found that the victim's death had been accidental and that there was no motive. So... Since the crime couldn't be proven to be an intentional murder, I believe a sentence of 15 years was handed down. Oh. Okay. Mm, very good. You can take your seat, Nina Fortuner. Yes, Professor. Is, is, this, is this the girl? Is this the girl, like the, the sister of Johan? Wow, good job, Nina. If no one had been able to give him the answer, I have no doubt that Kronecker would have probably... But of course, I cannot, I cannot remember report. what her name actually was. If we were lucky. I'll have to treat our savior Nina to something to eat. What do you say, Nina? A nice meal? Just the two of us? Oh, I'm sorry, Peter, but I have a club meeting today. Uh. Well, bye. <laughs> <laughs> she turned you down again. Hey, Peter, Burned. how many times was that? Come on, shut up. As if one of you losers could actually score a date with her. Oh, she's actually uh, doing martial arts. Thank you. And she is actually delivering oh pizza. <laughs> if I'm late with my deliveries, the manager's gonna be furious. <laughs> Oh my, the neighbors can probably hear you. You are such a child. Go and wash your hands, dear. Yes, ma'am. Huh? Hey, Mom, you dyed your hair. What do you think? At your age? Hmm. I don't think you should be dying Maybe not, your hair like, such a bright color. Of course, they could have adopted her. I think Mom looks great. Looks like she's going to some costume parade. Or maybe I'm just completely off here. Still young. Right? Hi, Dad. Oh, and that reminds me, speaking of costumes, I saw some kids dressed up from head to toe today. Oh yes, today's supposed to be the St. Hadrian costume parade. Oh, I wish I had dressed up like that when I was a little girl. They were so adorable. Hmm? Huh? Yeah, you did dress up in a costume once. Isn't that right, dear? Yeah, that's right. I'd completely forgotten. Really? 
Let's see. It's around here. Uh, but, uh, maybe I'm off. Like they looked like they had it from very You're little, so right? Cute. Guess I did. You were so excited and made such a fuss. Isn't that right, dear? Huh? Yeah, I remember. But I don't know. They, they, they seem very, um, they're very awkward about it, right? Costume parade, huh? <laughs> Distant spring. I forlornly wait for a spring that will never come. Hannah. Oh, Hannah. Will you get over your breakup already? Huh? I shall send you the most beautiful flowers. I was born to smother you with flowers. That's so beautiful. Wow, I wonder who sent this. Aha, uh -huh. I'm very impressed with you, Peter. So, how have you been? He's here? going to big length well, if that is him. I've been very well lately, Dr. Geidel. That's good to hear. But of course, I could tell just by the look on your face when you came into this session that you were doing well. So, tell me, are you still having that nightmare? The one about the monster emerging from the darkness? No, I've been sleeping very well. I've been so busy. I don't this have is time to This is definitely uh, Johan's sister, right? I was plagued by such a dream night after night. It's common for students to feel fear and anxiety. Expectations of the future mix up with other insecurities. People end up confused, losing sight of who they are. But who you are is something you can spend your whole life trying to grasp. But it would make sense because you cannot remember stuff because you have, yes, you have that shock period, right, after the, the death and everything. We spend our whole lives looking for the answers and we do the best we can. Right, and that's what I'm doing. I want to become a federal prosecutor. That's very good. All right, I think that brings us to the end of our session. Bye, and thank you, doctor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nina Fortiner, such a cheerful girl, but I can't help thinking that she's overcompensating or running from something, something overwhelmingly dark. Huh? Hmm. What do you mean, what? Don't act so innocent. What in the world are you going on about? I was born to smother you with flowers? I would never have guessed in a million it's, years you had such talent for writing him. poetry. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't know anything about it. I wouldn't be able to come up with frilly stuff like that even if I stood on my head. Then who was it? I only give my email address to friends and no one else. Beats me. Damn it. That what is pretty weird, though. Some suave poetry guy is honing in on my girl. <laughs> <laughs> who then? Who could it be? This was a bizarre murder that took place in Munich. After shooting the parents to death, the perpetrator strangled their two children with a rope. Grizzly, really? Now, I would like you to explain the verdict using the records from all of the hearings. Nina Fortiner. <laughs> hmm? What, do you not understand the question? Um, no. Um, well, the trial was focused mainly on the cold-blooded murder. Of an entire family. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, since he's she's evidence. remembering a little bit, aren't I? Evidence. Oh, so not even Nina has all the answers, huh? Uh. What's wrong, Nina? Is he is he remembering? Nina. Are you all right? Do you want to go see the nurse? I... I'm all right. I just felt a little ill, that's all. I was just listening to the professor, and I... Huh? You mean that question about that murdered family? Don't say that! <laughs> but it's... hmm. It, it was not even her... Daddy, it was not even her case, right? Because the great, children died. I guess you're pretty sensitive, too. Did you watch a horror movie that totally scared you when you were a kid or something? I know exactly what that counselor, Dr. Geidel, would say. She lived it. She lived it, If you get back to the root of it, I think that you'll find it was nothing significant. Now go back to your childhood. Am I right? 
That's it. Hmm? I have no memories. Huh? I remember nothing before the age of ten. Very specific. <laughs> More poetry? Yes, those two were indeed a very nice couple. To think that they died in such a way. Huh? Children. Oh, now that you mention it, yes, there was a son. His name was Michael, I do believe. He was there for a year or two. Let's see, a boy. Hmm. Do you remember if there was a boy? Yes, there was. Wasn't his name Michael? He was 14, give or take. Michael, you say? Yeah, I think I remember him. But why? Who are you, the police? Yes. Asking around? Michael Reichman. I remember him vaguely, but he was a student in my classroom. But he... He didn't leave much of an impression. I'm embarrassed to say it, but honestly, I don't remember him very well. I'm not sure if he had any friends. You see, there are no... Why are they hiding who is asking about this? Everything went up in a fire about six years ago now. There definitely so was, was a boy asking Michael about living here. But it makes sense, right? Until six years ago. And Michael's real name is... Johann Liebert. Johann, huh? Yes, there was a time when I went by that name. Or is it actually Michael? Who are you? Uh, what does it matter? What's the use? He's a serial killer, the older of twin siblings. That's all there is to it. Nothing else. If you really want answers, you should look for a, the, the sister. What am I doing? Where did she go, right? But she's probably Nina right now, right? Twins. Oh, he's realizing. His sister. <laughs> Where did his twin sister go? I will pick you up very soon. Who is this? He'll be picking me up very soon? But what does that mean? Mm, maybe it's Johan, right? A child. Oh, yes. There was a boy about seven or eight years ago. So, Mr. and Mrs. Heine had taken a boy in before they were killed. And what was he like? What was he like? That was quite a long time ago. And I think he only really lived with them for about a year or so. I honestly don't remember anything about him. Wait, do you remember if this boy had a sister? No, only the boy. Listen, I just want to forget about what happened to that poor couple. After all those horrible things happened, I almost moved away. It's not that easy, Tenma. I remember that boy very well. Why don't you come up? I was about to have some tea. Here we go. Come in, have a seat. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I was wondering... Just have a seat. Uh, Let's get some info, man. Go ahead, have some tea. Thank you, sir. You're a doctor, right? <laughs> that boy was the one who told me. You are Dr. Tenma. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely Michael or He's Johan or whatever his name is. Who is he? I have no idea who he is. It was just an anonymous email. Aw, you look so happy. You're not thinking this is Prince Charming on a white charger or a knight in shining armor coming for you, are you? It's a little bit dangerous, but still know who jealous. he is, right? There you go, Nina, daydreaming again. It said I was born to smother you with flowers. Come on. But then again, so why would her brother write that to her, right? Like that. Oh, hold on, wait. There is a new guy in our class. You know who I'm talking about? Oh, I've seen him. 
He's the guy who sits quietly in that legendary seat in room 12, where you're bound to be called by the instructor. But strangely enough, he's never called on. That's right, and you want to know what else? He is always staring at Nina the entire class. Uh -huh. He's, He's the, the one. one! What do you mean? Maybe that's Come got on, the guy. you know. Prince Charming, who else? <sighs> All I know is that boy was extremely grateful to you. Yes, Dr. Tenma? He told me more than once that because you saved his life, you meant more to him than his parents. What name did he go by then? Bronze. But he did tell me it wasn't his real name. <laughs> if he opened up enough to tell you that much, hmm. means he must have really trusted you. He just showed up one day out of nowhere, really. Mr. and Mrs. Heine, who lived across the hall, took him in. He lived with them for about a year. That fits, no, that fits actually, what they were talking a, about. It was uh, 14 months, to be precise, from March 1987 to April 1988. And then one day, out of the blue, he suddenly vanished. It he really was very bright, that boy, and very well-mannered. Did he visit you in your apartment very often? Hmm. Every day. I live alone, so I always welcome the company. He sat in that chair and would spend most of his time studying. He was able to master the English and French that I taught him in no time. By the time he disappeared, he was completely fluent in both languages. He was only 12 years old. <clears throat> Can you tell me if there's anything else you remember about him? Anything? He was always interested in listening to my stories. And what kind of stories do you think he liked best? Go on, take a wild guess. Most likely the violent ones. I, uh, he liked my war stories. Yeah, yeah. War stories. During World War II, I was on the crew of a U-boat. The boy's favorite story was about the time we were attacked by a destroyer of the Allied forces. We were at a depth of 120 meters. That's when we were attacked by the enemy. We had suffered a mortal blow, but we just kept going. We all waited in terror inside that creaking boat, enduring hour after hour. We had to endure that hell for a day and a half. Any ordinary child would have probably looked at this as another adventure story, but that boy was different. What he was most interested in was my description of ultimate fear. Mm -hmm. Yes, ultimate fear. That reaction of people on the verge of death fascinated him. That was all he was interested in. We he definitely got our, our guy here. Right? So what... what was the expression on his face as he listened? He probably had a gleam in his eye and a smile, I imagine. <laughs> imagine? Well, I cannot see, Dr. Taylor. Oh, he's blind! I, I did so wonder no, his eyes. I don't know the boy's real name, nor obviously do I have any idea what he looks like, for that matter. Earlier, you suggested the boy trusted his me eyes because he weird. told me Franz wasn't his real name. I can assure you that he doesn't trust anyone. There's only one person that boy is trusted in his life, and that's his sister. <laughs> Listen, I need your help. I'm looking for that sister. He said he would go get her when she turned 20. Where is she? In Heidelberg. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, yep. But why, why would he ride with roses and that? But of course he could be, be uh, scooter, like a little honey. bit psycho, right? I will. Bye. See you later, Daddy. Bye. And drive safely, okay? See you later. <laughs> <laughs> they don't look happy. The time has come, hasn't it? I know. We made an agreement. We said we'd tell her on her 20th birthday. That she's that, not the kind. That she isn't our real daughter. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was pretty obvious, guys. Hold on a second. I'm not sure I can do this. What are you talking about? You wanted to meet him. We told him you'd wait for him here. It's better you didn't know. Don't mess it up. You're about to meet Prince Charming. Later. Uh, nope, nope. Wait, Clara, Beate! Uh, how could they do this behind my back? <gasps> it's him! 
Here we go. Is that Johan or? Uh. Hi, how do you do? You're Nina Fortuner, right? Uh, yes. Oh, good. Yeah. No, it's not. My name's Otto Huberman. Oh, uh, hello. Mmm. <gasps> yep, there he is. There he is. gonna do girl who who are you is it fainting oh like wouldn't that have Nina. like uh, Nina. you know Nina, what's wrong uh, the skull So there we go guys, that was episode 5 of Monster and uh, I don't know if Johan's real name is Michael Rickman, right? But whoever he is, whoever or whatever he is, um, th th there's definitely something mysterious going on about that guy, right? You know, um, what is, what, what is his, his motives, right? If he is actually the serial killer behind all of this, right? Like, what is he gaining from all this? Is he is he just by, just fascinated with death and fear? Um, it does seem like it, right? After we talk with this blind man, and I mean, he he, he did take interest in the war stories, the the stories about extreme fear. Um, but I don't know, like it it. it it seems weird, but of course it's, it's, I guess it's in the mind of a psychotic serial killer, I guess, right? I, I don't know, like, it, it's definitely, it's definitely very interesting and um, the parents, I, I'm thinking like yeah, the parents or the, you know, adopted, that adopted Nina, right? You know, it, it, it was kind of obvious that they were not the parents, right? Uh, but it's still it's still kind of cute that they that they plan to tell her on her twentieth birthday, right? Um, they look nothing alike, right? And her fainting from seeing Johan, I'm just gonna keep calling him that for now. Uh, seeing Johan is is definitely you know something about the whole trauma thing that happened uh, when she was a kid, and that is also why she cannot remember anything from, you know, 10 and below, right? Um, and I, I mean, I guess the emails and everything was really from this, uh, what was his name, Anton or something, uh, and he was fascinated with her, but, you know, Johan showing up there made her faint, right? Because all this, like, you know, psyche stuff happening in her brain, right? You know, uh, yeah, the, the, she, she needs to remember, right? And I hope, I hope that Tenma and her will meet up at some point and you will actually, you know, start to get some answers about what is going on here, right? Right? Why, why you know, why would he, do, what did she see that night, right? What, what happened? Why would she so, you know, mute after that, right? And why did she mention stuff about kill and you know there's a lot of questions here and what is this monster that Junker was talking about was it really just Johan he was talking about or you know <laughs> yeah holy shit I, I just want to keep watching right now actually um, but it have, we'll have to wait for a little bit but anyway guys thank you for watching thank you for following as always please leave a like I would appreciate it so much see you next time peace